Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, we're going to do a video today on the T-Mobile home internet and how you can get on a specific band of T-Mobile's network. As you know, they have 4G and 5G bands. They have uh, 5G extended and a 5G ultra capacity. There's pros and cons of all of those. Now this here looks a little funny, but this is the KVD21 gateway and I took it apart. Um, so that's why it's all opened up. And you can see here I have these leads on them. These pigtails are for connecting an external antenna. And so I'll go ahead and give you the, the lowdown basically. It's not a software trick. I have some other things out there where you can go there in software. I have not figured out how to force it with a software, but this is how you can force it with a external antenna. So this was kind of a interesting learning. A viewer actually uh, has reached out to me about some of this and I also had um, seen some of these uh, oddities. And so we confirmed it, and it's not just me, uh, but I won't say that it's guaranteed for you. But certainly if you have an external antenna, here are some things you can try with the Arcadian one. This doesn't work, unfortunately, for the um, Nokia one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of um, the solution for that one for this specific uh, band locking technique. So um, you might be asking or you might not understand why you might want to pick a specific band. It's supposed to automatically pick the best band, the best band out there, but it doesn't always do that. And the other thing to know is, in 71, which is the 600 megahertz 5G extended, typically actually has better upload speed. Sometimes significantly. Like I've seen people have 60, 80 megabits per second upload, whereas in 41 typically has lower upload speeds. And it's I'm not I won't get into all the details, but it's basically the way that those um, bands are set up with the packets that for N41 they have to basically share uh, the same stream and they have to prioritize or they have to determine what how to prioritize upload and download and they they prioritize the download bandwidth over the upload bandwidth so because of that N41 typically is a lot lower uh, upload speed from what I have seen so for those people, you might want to force it onto N71 and um, and get that better speed. Or sometimes you might have some kind of issue, some weird thing, maybe a lot of congestion on N41 and you want to get to a different channel even though it's technically uh, a worse channel on paper. So let's head up to the uh, third floor where I have the antenna and I will show you uh, how to do this trick. All right, so now I'm up here in this third floor loft. A little bit sweaty, sorry, it's really hot uh, today and this loft uh, just sucks up all the, the hot air. You see the four antenna leads are now leading out to the 4x4 four four antenna. And I have it set up, I talked to Waveform actually about this. Uh, one, to get their advice on what their favorite setup is and then two, what they thought of this little trick. Basically Waveform says that, you know, the antenna, the 4x4 four four has um, four ports on it and they from left to right it's a plus 45 minus 45 and that's how the antenna is polarized and then it's plus 45 minus 45 again so that's one two three four i'll put a little diagram up here for you and on here they say to use m m1 m2 and d that's their order of preferred and there are some reasons for that now for example m and m1 are actually ones that transmit for N41, which is the 5G ultra capacity, which is like supposedly the best, right? And normally it is the best. And then those M and M1 have to be polarized plus minus. So it doesn't actually have to be that specific order, but you want to keep the plus and minus um, set up correct. And then the M port on here transmits for N71, and then M and D receive N71. So again, those need to be polarized plus and minus from each other so that it works out well. So what I had done in the past is I had a little bit different setup and I just tested it and compared it. It actually gets a very similar speed. The waveform one is, it edges out slightly faster. But in the past I had done D, M, M1, and M2 because in my testing that actually showed the best. But uh, for me, that's like a tie basically for um, that versus the waveform one. Now to trick it, or to try to force it to get N71, what I do is I basically switch the um, first and the last one. So I go um, to D, M1, M2, and then M. 
All right, so the M and M1, if you remember, that's what transmits in 70, or sorry, in 41. And so in the waveform setup, you have those as one's a plus, the M's a plus, and the M1's a minus. And now what I've done by switching um, these out, I am now making them both a minus, which means that they are not cross-polarized, which means it creates interference. And it's really dependent on a lot of things like your location versus the tower, but what it can actually do is cancel out the signal. So that means that you are effectively making it not have a signal there for N41 transmit. Now, what I did find is that if I have the antenna perfectly tuned, in my best location at least, it is, um, I can't force it off of N41 when I do that. Even though I mess up the, the setup, it actually still works okay. It does hurt the signal, but it doesn't make it kick off to N71. So, you know, for me, this isn't that useful in my best setup, but if I um, actually point my antenna where it's not optimal, that hurts all of my signals. And a lot of people might be in that situation with their best signal, and they might be flipping between N71 and N41, and they, when it does that, sometimes it drops the signal or your Wi-Fi connection, and so it messes things up or makes a pause in your um, in your internet connectivity if you're streaming or if you're gaming or whatever. So that's where if you do this switch, it will actually change. So let's go ahead and see how that speed changes for me. So right now I have it set up in the um, mode where it has uh, M is in 1, and then in 2 I have M1, and then in 3 I have M2, and then in 4 I have D. So this is the waveform preferred setting. So let's go in here to um, T-Mobile, the app. And then we're going to advanced cellular metrics. And let's just check and see what we have here. We're on band B2. We have a RSRP of minus 100 and a signal to noise of 5. And then here in the 5G, you can see I have now a N41 RSRP of minus 113, signal to noise of 7.6. So those are not great um, numbers by any means. But what I can do here is go to a speed test. And we'll see what speed we get here. This is N41. Now, this is, again, not my antenna setup in the best location. I've intentionally pointed it um, kind of poorly so that I don't get the best signal. But that's to show you that um, there's a speed difference. And there, uh, for some people, again, like I said, N71 gives you typically faster upload. So we'll see what it does here. So I get 100 um, download, which is very good. But you can see... My upload is being pretty poor here at like 4. So that's what I want to watch. So I'm going to switch these antenna leads. I'm just going to switch the first and the fourth one basically. And that will give me my new setup. So let me, And I can do this live here. So I'm just going to do 4 and 1. And you probably can't tell it on the uh, camera because it's hard to even see in real life. But these uh, ports here or these cables are labeled from uh, waveform. And so I know which one is which, um, and I, you know, I hooked up one, two, three, four on the antenna so that I knew which port is which out here. All right, so again, just to confirm, um, this one is now D, M1, M2, and then M. So let's go back to T-Mobile, and let's just see, hopefully it's updated by now. Okay, there we go. So you can see it's now switched to N71. My RSRP is actually better, so that's a um, stronger signal on N71, but because it, 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 it's taught to favor N41, it goes to N41. So now we go to LTE, we go back here. If you look, lo and behold, my, my B2, which is my 4G signal, it's almost the exact same number. I think actually the signal to noise is maybe slightly higher um, with this setup here. So let's go to speed test. This is what really matters, obviously. And let's run this speed test and see what we get. And I didn't pay uh, perfect attention to my ping, but I think it was very similar. It's in this uh, mid upper 30s range. Now, if you look here, my download is obviously a lot slower. We're down in the 30s versus 100. 
So that's a certainly a big difference, but let's see what the upload does. There we go. So now my uploads are much, much quicker. You know, we're talking, um, what were they before? Three, four. Um, so we're five times quicker or something um, with this N71. So for some people, getting that faster upload is more important than the download. If you can live with 40 megabits per second down, um, then maybe you want that 23 megabits per second upload. Uh, if you're a YouTube like me guy and you want to upload stuff, doing it at that slow, um, uh, you know, a couple megabits per second is painful. So this is the trick you can do. And from what I've seen, it is once I get it on here, it will stay. And we'll just go back here and just kind of verify um, that we haven't flipped off of N71 or something. You can see, nope, still on it and good. And again, like I said, the only trick too is that this isn't a hard firmware. This isn't a band lock per se. This is really just messing with the signal so that you get um, it to automatically pick the N71 band of preferred. All right, so that's uh, the tricks that I have for today. Subscribe to the channel if you like it. Give it a thumbs up, of course. And check out the rest of my videos on there, especially if you want to see more about this T-Mobile home internet or Verizon home internet or any of my other stuff. I'll do a lot of um, lighting, security camera, nature of the outdoors, things around my property. So be sure to check it out and stay tuned.